So now that we've explored where our electricity comes from here in Wisconsin, I'd like to introduce another way of thinking about power grids. That's called a microgrid. So microgrids are small local power grids existing separately from the larger power supply. They use advanced technology and software to combine and direct power from many different sources. So this image on the bottom does a really good job of describing what a microgrid is. So this town is supplied by electricity from say a coal power plant on the left here. And these five buildings are connected to a microgrid that gets electricity from some other sources. So let's say that this building has a diesel generator that produces electricity. And this building has some solar panels on its roof that produce electricity as well. And microgrids have a central system where those different sources of power will be combined and then redistributed to these five buildings as it sees fit. So thinking about microgrids, what kind of places do you guys think would benefit the most from them? Here's a good opportunity to pause the video and talk amongst yourselves or just think to yourself, what kind of places would be most in need of a microgrid system as opposed to a traditional power grid? To illustrate the answer to this question, I've just selected some really cool examples of microgrids around the world to talk about. So here in Corto, Haiti, is this town, a really small town that previously didn't really have access to electricity. They were too far away from any larger power grid. They had a couple diesel generators that supplied electricity to really important buildings like hospitals and schools, but most homes didn't have electricity. And this town recently installed a solar panel array on this little farmland, this little piece of farmland here. And that solar panel array supplies over 2,100 homes with electricity. And these homes had never experienced electricity before. So this is a really good example of how microgrids can bring cheap electricity to remote areas that didn't have it in the first place. Here on the right is Alcatraz Island. You guys have probably heard of the famous prison that was located there. And that prison shut down in 1963 because it was too expensive to run. And a big reason for that was because they were isolated from any sort of power grid. So they had to spend lots and lots of money shipping thousands and thousands of barrels of diesel oil over to this island every week. And that was just not sustainable. So the prison shut down and now it's a tourist attraction that you can go visit on a vacation. And recently they installed a solar panel microgrid on the roof of the main prison complex. And these solar panels supply the island with 50% of the electricity that it needs. So that drastically reduces energy costs and makes it much easier to run and cheaper to visit if you're a tourist. In addition to bringing power to places that don't have it, microgrids can also supply extra power in larger cities where they might be no, most needed. So here on the left is Kaiser Richmond Medical Center in California. And this is a hospital that recently constructed a solar panel powered microgrid on the roof of their parking garages. These solar panels provide electricity to the hospital in case the main power grid experiences a blackout. I'm sure you guys can imagine all the awful things that could happen at a hospital if the power goes out. And these solar panels provide a really good fail safe against that. So the hospital will always have electricity no matter what. On the right here is Princeton University in New Jersey. And recently Hurricane Sandy tore through the state and knocked out most of the power. But Princeton University was able to continue running because they had a solar powered microgrid that supplied the whole university with power throughout the storm. So that's, these are two examples of microgrid supplying extra power in cities where you wouldn't expect extra power to be needed, but blackouts always um, provide a risk. So what are the benefits of microgrids? Just to recap, they bring electricity to remote places that can't connect to a larger grid. They store electricity that can be used during a blackout. This is called grid resilience, basically having multiple sources of electricity that you can rely on. They make electricity cheaper. They make it easier for us to use renewable energy. It's much easier to install solar panels on your roof or a wind turbine in your farmland uh, than it is to burn coal or construct some sort of power plant in your backyard, right? So microgrids just inherently lend themselves to renewable energy. Finally, they allow for energy autonomy. What does this mean exactly? It means that the people producing the electricity in a microgrid are also the same people using it. So they get to produce the energy, control how much is produced and control where it goes instead of relying on some faraway power plant for all their electricity. So just to wrap things up here, I'd like you to look back at the energy pathway you drew. How do you think it would look different if we got all our electricity from a microgrid running on solar power? You could even redraw your energy pathway 
to model a microgrid instead of a traditional power grid like we have in Wisconsin. What kind of changes would you make? Awesome, so that concludes our microgrid mapping activity. Thank you so much for participating today. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you could contact outreach at wisc.edu. And if you'd like to learn more about the Wisconsin Energy Institute, you could go to energy.wisc.edu.